What is up guys, Logan here again with another video. Thank you guys so much for all the support. We are pushing 2,000 subscribers. That means the absolute world to me. So I just want to say that. Don't forget to leave a like on the video and consider subscribing. If you want some consistent stock market information and technical analysis, check the links below in the description. I have a premium Discord and a free Discord, so make sure to check both of those out. Let's get into this video. So I want to talk about NEO. Uh, there's a lot, a lot, a lot of information. There's a lot, a lot of news coming out about NEO. So I want to kind of get into technical analysis, but also I really want to talk about why I'm not going to be playing NEO's earnings and why I really haven't touched the stock too much recently. Now here and there, I'll play it with my small account to try to make 20 bucks, 30 bucks, whatever, just for fun, kind of get a feel, see how they move, and just really get a feel for that stock. So let's check this out from a technical standpoint. I want to use, let's first check out the 180 day above the EMA line, which is a good sign of bullishness right now. And then this is also where I kind of put their support, right? Like if anything was to happen to NEO and they do fall, you know, below 40, check out this 180 day EMA spot at 3581 over this big 180 day chart. So make sure you check that out. And then if we also check out the EMA and the five day, five minute chart, check this out. So the big strategy that I talked about in the last couple of videos, talking with Palantir, if we scroll this way, there we go. So you see how bearish this stock got after it fell below the view up and then also the EMA here. So it was trading above it, still shows signs of strength, but the second it goes underneath it, and I'm looking at the five day, five minute chart, we see a lot of bearishness. We continue to see bearish signals. And then even when they opened up today on Monday, so this is after hours, got a little bit of strength in the morning, shot up, came back down, hung around on the VWAP and the EMA are together, which to me is a sign of a little bit of uncertainty when it comes to the stock. As you can see, we're up and down all day. Now we are pumping in after hours on NEO. But the one thing I do want to also touch on too that's very important with NEO is if you're going to play earnings, make sure you're either playing shares or you're playing a really far out option contract. And by far out, I mean far out. And that would be, you know, January most likely, something like that really far out because I'm looking at the weekly contracts and they have 220% implied volatility. So with the implied volatility so high, your contract will get crushed going into the next day, even if you do have a successful turnout with NEO's earnings. You know, let's say you had a $47 call, they post earnings tomorrow, and after hours, you know, they're $51 or 52, you know, and you'd be in the money and you would have a really nice uh, room to run. But at that point too, if you're, that contract has that much implied volatility, it's really going to hurt it. And the contract could eventually become worthless. So make sure you're not playing the weekly contract on NEO if you're playing earnings. But I know a lot of people who are playing NEO and they want, in my opinion, I've been getting so many questions, kind of like Palantir last week. This week it's NEO's earnings. So I'm really curious to see what kind of movement we get and we see if we get, you know, a little bit of a squeeze but their earnings is tomorrow so playing the run-up could be a really great opportunity for you but it is expected for NEO to actually post profitable quarter which they haven't done in a decent amount of time so it could be a great time for NEO to go up but also like I said Square they posted great earnings and they fell and they've just been consolidating since so could we see the same thing after that I'm not entirely sure or certain because I don't trade NEO very often, but especially in the long term. See, I hold Tesla shares, so I'm up about 200% on my Tesla shares. So there's really no reason for me to kind of diversify in the EV field when they are like my company, just like how Apple is like my phone company. So yeah, that's the, other, that's the one thing I wanted to touch on. And NEO is going to have a lot of volatility tomorrow, but also their contracts are extremely expensive to play because the implied volatility is so high currently on the weekly ones, but even a couple weeks out. I mean, these contracts are way more expensive than they should be. Even when I play the same day expiration ones, if I ever do that on like a Friday and think or swim, that's one of the things that always like kind of makes me take a step back is, okay, you know, this is really expensive. The implied volatility is high. And that's just because of the amount of traders and how many trades are happening. So yeah, that's my little uh, spiel, but my technical analysis on them, like I've been saying, we have the VWAP, it's above the EMA, so it's showing signs of strength, and we should continue to see green after hours. And that's if we go back here, like I said, you just got to be careful of this in the morning. If we do get a break of the VWAP and the EMA, it can get ugly, 
because I think NEO is an emotionally traded stock and I'm neither bullish or bearish on NEO. I'm neutral. So that's one thing I thought you guys should know is I don't really root for this thing to go up or down. I just kind of play with what it gives me. And I think that's an important way to look at the stock market in general, you know, so you don't get FOMO, but also so that you know, you don't get too hopeful and then end up losing a lot of your money in an investment. I mean, this has shown a lot of strength the whole time it stayed above the EMA. We had it here Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. But when we did break it Friday afternoon, uh, we started to really crash hard. Seems to have found some level of support at around 40. So that's really strong. And we even saw it today um, in pre-market get pretty close to 40. So there's a lot of support here from what I see. And I know you can draw support in many different locations, but I think for the relativity of what's going on right now with the earnings play, 40 is a great line to draw. See, and if I was to ever personally enter NEO, I would wait until about the $25 to $30 range. And now you may say that we may never see that again, and we might not, but like I said, I have my Tesla shares, so I'm completely okay with that. But if we are gonna talk about NEO and what I think is gonna happen, and I don't wanna sound bearish to you guys, but just with how earnings have gone recently, I think we will see a little pullback. Um, and whether that's tomorrow on the earnings run up or if that's actually at the earnings call. See, I think it would be smart to play the run up if you were to able to get in today at around you know 44. And now we're pumping to 47 after hours. You could sell your contract in the morning before earnings and avoid the implied volatility crush. So that's kind of my little breakdown on NEO. They're worth 50 billion, so if you really think that they're gonna gain, you know, another two billion in funding or four or six or whatever, you know, it's pretty similar, right? When they're close to a fifty billion dollar market cap, they're about fifty dollars a share. So you can kind of do the math that way and see how much money is coming in and out of NEO. You know, millions. I mean, there's tons of trades every day on NEO. Even the first hour, it says down here, fifteen like essentially fifteen million, but to be exact, thirteen million trades in five minutes because we're on the five minute chart something to, to take into consideration if you're going to continue to trade them but that's my little opinion on them and that's how i see kind of their earnings going now i bet they do post good earnings i just don't know how they're going to react exactly after that because a lot of stocks who have been posting great earnings have proceeded to fall and then we've even seen stocks who miss earnings not really move so it's like, how do you play earnings in this type of market environment, especially with how the world's kind of positioned right now? And that's something for you to definitely try to figure out yourself. But I just wanted to give a little spiel on NEO, but I think overall, as long as we stay above 36, I mean, that's a great strength spot like we saw on the 180-day chart where the EMA is, like I said, 3581. So as long as we stay above there, I think you guys are fine um, for anyone who made entries around this level. But if we do proceed to fall under it, we could see some bearishness for a little bit and maybe NEO back to 25 to 30. And that's where I would pick up a position personally, but I don't feel like I missed out on NEO. This is just, just how I think. You know, I don't really feel FOMO too much. I do a lot of credit spreads now. So I just wanted to kind of tell you guys that as well. But that's kind of what I see with NEO and how I see with their earnings. So just make sure you watch that. And then I can also make a NEO earnings update video after, and then we can kind of talk through why the price of the stock move the way it did. That's going to be everything for me. So make sure you guys leave a like on this video. I really appreciate all the support. It goes really far. So I will see you guys in the next one. Have a great day.